Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of how to create your own first person shooter single player game. In this episode we will cover how to get movement ready as well as shooting a gun with raycast and register the collisions of the enemies. If you want to follow along with this series, check out the card that displays at the top right now to check out the playlist. But this is the first episode though, so if you are watching this as it was posted, then stay tuned for the second episode. First thing that we will do is we will create a new project in Unity Hub and we will be using Unity version 2020.3.25F1. It's always an LTS version. Click URP3D as the template and name the project whatever you would like. I will just name mine Single Player FPS TUT for tutorial. Once the project is open, rename Sample Scene to Game Scene and reload the scene. Delete the example assets in the scene and the main camera. Inside the assets folder, delete example assets and the readme and the tutorial info. Inside of the scripts folder, you can delete the one script inside of there as well. Create a plane and rename it to ground and scale it by 10 by 10 by 10. We will be using the following asset packs from the Unity Asset Store. If you are following along with this FPS series, make sure to get all these assets. Once you have your Unity Asset Store open, then sign in to your account. The first asset we need to add to our assets is the Starter Assets First Person Character Controller. Then we need to add Sample Low Poly Guns Pack. Then the last asset pack will be Simple Modern Crosses Pack 1. I have given the links in the descriptions down below for all of the assets mentioned for quick access to add. Inside of Unity, open the Package Manager. To do this, head to Window, Package Manager, and then head to My Assets, and search for the Assets, and Download, and Import. The first asset will be the First Person Character Controller. If you receive a warning which states that it is using a new Input System package, then select Yes to switch over to the new Input System, and it will automatically disable the old Input System. It will also restart your Unity. Once you are back, continue with downloading and importing the rest. Inside of the package manager, then search for Sample Low Poly Guns Pack and import and then Simple Modern Crosses Pack and import. Create a new folder called Imported Assets and drag all of the imported assets into the folder to not clutter up the assets folder. Before we start adding the character inside of the game, Head to Edit and Render Pipeline, Universal Render Pipeline, and Upgrade Project Materials. Just because the assets materials were not meant for URP, but this will fix the material issue. Go inside of the Starter Assets folder and go into the First Person Controller folder and inside of Prefabs, you will find the Nested Parent Unpack Prefab. Duplicate the Prefab by pressing Ctrl and D and create a new folder called Prefabs inside of the Base Assets folder. Drag and drop the duplicated Prefab inside of the Prefabs folder and rename it to Player. Open the Player Prefab and delete UI Canvas Starter Assets input and go out of the Prefab and drag it into the scene and just make sure your character is above the ground plane. Play the game and see if you can walk around and jump around as the capsule. Now that we have a moving player, let us put a gun in front of it. In the gun asset, there is already a rifle prefab. We can drag and drop the rifle 00 inside of the hierarchy and by using the position tool, we can place it in front of the player and drag and drop the rifle 00 inside of the player prefab. Once it is inside of the player prefab, drag it inside of the main camera. We can add a gun holder game object in the future to swap between weapons and have a position where the weapon can be instantiated at, but not in this episode. If you want to try that out yourself and show me what you have done in Discord, then please do so. Let us get the crosshair into the game as well. Create a new UI canvas and rename it to UI canvas. Create a new image and rename it to crosshair. Open up the crosshairs pack and go into the pack folder and drag and drop any crosshair inside of the image source. I didn't want my crosshair to be too big, so I resized it to 40 on the width and height. If we play the game now, we will see that the weapon is following the camera rotation and position and the crosshair is right at the center as it is only a piece of UI. Let us create an enemy prefab that we would be shooting. 
First, go to Hierarchy and create a cube by right-clicking 3D Object Cube. Reset the transform of the cube if needed to get it into the center and rename the cube to enemy. Click the tag drop down and add a new tag and call it enemy. Make sure to click on the enemy game object and then swap untagged to enemy tag. In the materials folder, create a new temporary material called enemy temp. Click on the fuse and make the color red or to whichever color you prefer. We then want to drag and drop this material on top of the enemy game object just to give it a different color. Scale the enemy transform on the Y to 2 and position of the Y to 1 just so that we can see the enemy clearly and that it is above the ground plane. You can then position the enemy wherever needed by using the move tool in the scene view. Once you are done with all of these steps, drag and drop the enemy game object which is in the hierarchy into the prefabs folder and make sure to zero out the X position and the Z position on the prefab. Open up the enemy prefab and create a new effect particle system. I'm not going to go into depth with the particle system, but we just want something to register when we actually shoot our enemy unit. First, we want to focus on the transform. Position X needs to be 0, Y 0 0.35 and Z 0. Rotation on the X needs to be minus 90 and the rest 0. The scale needs to be all 1 as well. Now for the particle system settings. I will only tell you what needs to change as I change them. And then when you have free time, test out all the values and see what you can achieve with the particle system. The duration needs to be 1 and the looping needs to be set to false. Start lifetime 0.4. Start speed 4. Start size 0.3. Start color I changed to red as I want it to look like blood particles. You can make it any color you want. If this is going to be a zombie game, make it green blood. Or if it is an alien game for blue blood or anything like that. The gravity modifier needs to be 2. And the simulation speed needs to be 2 as well. Minimize particle system and expand emission. Rate over time will be 0. And underneath bursts, add once to the list and leave as default. If you want more of a burst, you can add more to the count. Minimize emission and expand shape. Here we will change the shape to box and randomize direction we want to have at 1. And spherize direction to 1 as well. This will be all for our particle system. You can rename it if you want to. You can play to test the particle system and also remember to disable play on your way in the particle system settings as we only want the particle effect to play when the enemy gets shot. Head out of the enemy prefab and let's start with implementing shooting into the game with raycasts. For shooting we need to implement an extra action in the new input system. There is a great tutorial about the input system with CodeMonkey. Make sure to check that out for extra knowledge as he is great with all of his tutorials. The link is also down below. The input system is located inside of Imported Assets, Starter Assets, Input System. Rename the Starter Assets to Input Manager and double click the Input Manager to open it and add a new action and call it Shoot. Inside of the action, make sure the binding path is set to mouse, left button, and set control scheme to keyboard and mouse. Make sure to save the asset and close the input manager. While the input manager is selected, generate a C sharp class and hit apply. This will create a new input manager script with all of the maps and actions and bindings to be used in any other script. Inside of the scripts folder, create a new script called gun and drag and drop the script on top of the rifle prefab. Open up the script and create two new variables. The first one will be private float range equal 100F, which will represent how far we can shoot and public camera FPS cam, which will take in the camera which the player uses to shoot out the ray cast to all of the other game objects. Make sure to remove the start and update method and create an awake function. Inside the awake function, write input manager called input manager equal new input manager then input manager dot player 
dot enable to be able to use all the player map actions. We then want to listen to the shoot event by typing input manager dot player dot shoot dot perform plus equal and press tab to auto complete to get the callback context. Rename shoot perform to shoot an object to context. Make sure to type at the top using unity engine dot input system and remove it from the shoot method. Inside of the method, we can call raycast hit and call it hit. Then if physics dot raycast and then pass in FPS cam dot transform dot position FPS cam dot transform dot forward out hit and then the range. So what we are checking with this if statement is that we are taking the camera transforms position and going into the forward direction and checking if we hit anything at all which will be stored inside of hit and then range is the max distance where it will check for any objects. Now that we know we have hit an object now inside the if statement we can check if we have hit the enemy by writing if hit dot transform dot compare tag is enemy then hit dot transform dot game object dot get components in children the particle system and then play this is because we know the particle system is a child of the enemy prefab we just get the component and play the particle system once now let's go back into unity and drag and drop the main camera inside of the player prefab into the gun script and play the game to test. We can now aim at the enemy prefab and when we hit the left mouse button then the particle system will play. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already make sure to like and comment and subscribe down below to like the content I am releasing as it does mean a lot. Join the discord channel if you want to learn more with game development and if you would just like to join the community or ask for any advice. I also have a patreon page if you want to show extra support, then that is the platform to support me on. Check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below as well as the full Git project. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.